Hello guys and welcome to another great video. In today's project we are making cold chocolate fondant. The ingredient list is in the description. This is basically like making the original hot version or also known as chocolate lava cake but in this case it is cold. Here is how I made it and so can you. Let's begin. First you will need a shallow flexible ice cube tray. Here I have one. This makes small rectangles. Place a tray on the bottom to really secure the flexible mold. Next, what you will need is some amazing homemade chocolate sauce. This rich chocolate sauce can be found on my channel or you can follow the link on the top right corner to make this. Pour it in the ice cube mold. You can make as many as you like because we are going to freeze this so you can also be prepared for the future in case you want to make more. I'm going to make a few. Use a pellet knife to make sure it is leveled and smooth on the top. I also want to show you something different. I also have here some raspberry essence which I made as well. You can find this recipe in my channel as well in the essence of berries video or you can click on the link on the top right corner if you want to make this too. This rich raspberry sauce will pair nicely with the richness of the chocolate. I will just pour a few just to show you. Take this tray and place it in the freezer. Overnight is best. In the meantime, while waiting, do check out my other videos. The next day. Now we're going to make the second part of the cold chocolate fondant. Take your mixing bowl and pour in 80 grams of egg yolks. Take your whisk attachment and turn on your mixer to medium. Let that whisk. We want to create lots of air. In the meantime, in a small pot, pour in 60 grams of water first. Then pour in 75 grams of caster sugar. Take the pot over to the stove and turn on the heat to medium to high. We want it to boil. In the meantime, the whisking egg yolks have doubled in volume, becoming light and airy. Next, you will need a thermometer. Stick it into the boiling syrup. We want it to reach 121 degrees Celsius. But we can take it off when it reaches 119 because the remaining heat will take it there. Take it off from the heat and pour the mixture into the mixing bowl slowly. Pouring it into the side of the bowl helps. Try to avoid pouring it directly into the whisk, otherwise you will end up with spun sugar. We don't want that. What you are making now is called pate bomb, which is pouring hot sugar syrup over whisking egg yolks. Whereas an Italian meringue is the same concept, but pouring it over whisking egg whites. Let that go for several minutes. It will be almost ready when you're able to touch the sides of the mixing bowl and it doesn't feel hot anymore. Take it off from the mixing bowl and check the consistency. It will be smooth and creamy with a pale color. This is what we're looking for. The consistency is good when you're able to draw some lines and it holds itself. The temperature for reference is slightly below 30 degrees Celsius. Now we can go on to the next stage. I will be using chocolate from Calabao, which is from Belgium. The percentage for this is 70%, making it really, really rich. Who doesn't want to indulge in a rich chocolate dessert? Measure out 200 grams of chocolate and pour in 50 grams of full fat milk. Stick it in your microwave. Melt the mixture with 30 second burst intervals. Just warm up the mixture. Don't make it too hot. You might think, why hasn't it melted yet? Don't worry. Just give it a mix and everything will come together. You are basically making a ganache here. Also, just for reference, this is about 40 degrees Celsius, not too hot. All the temperatures are important, especially for the final stage. Mix the ganache that you have just made with the pâté bombe. Mix everything together until it is nice and homogeneous. It will look like a very rich chocolate cream. Now 
Now for the final part. Take a large bowl and pour in 350 grams of double cream. Start whisking. Whisk it until there is some resistance and you can see the lines from the whisk. Once that has happened, you can take the chocolate mixture and place that into the cream bowl. Gently mix everything together. Remember how I mentioned that temperatures are very important? If everything is too hot, it will ruin your whipped cream. You can use your whisk to make sure everything is mixed properly. It should look like a very luxurious chocolate cream or mousse after you are done. You can enjoy it like this, but we are not done yet. Place what you have just made into a piping bag. Once you are ready with your piping bag, now we can go ahead with the molding process. I have over here a ring mold. The height of the mold is 3.5 cm and the diameter is 7 cm. Take a tray and some baking paper. Place 6 ring molds on the baking tray. This recipe makes about 6 molds perfectly. Next, cut a hole in your piping bag and fill the ring mold about halfway. Then take a spoon and press with the bottom part to evenly distribute the mixture in the ring mold. By doing this, it will help eliminate most air bubbles. After you have done that, take the chocolate and raspberry sauce out of the freezer the ones that you have made from yesterday. There you go, a nice little rectangle. Place that in the middle and press down slightly. And the last one is the extra something I want to show you. Take your piping bag with the chocolate mixture and pipe a generous amount. Take your pallet knife and carefully level the top part. Don't be afraid to get some more mixture and spread them around. What you want to end up with is a nice leveled flat top. Don't rush. If you have to go over a few times, go over a few times. Once you are done, place the whole tray in the freezer. You want the chocolate mousse to set without melting the middle part yet. Come back the next day because freezing overnight is best. The next day, take one or however many you want to enjoy out of the freezer. This is now very solid and very cold. You will need a blowtorch for this next part. Use the flame to kiss the sides of the ring mold, but not for too long. Once you have gone around, gently in one motion pull the ring mold up from the plate. It should come off easily, just like that. Because it is still frozen, you will have to put it in the fridge to let it defrost for a good couple of hours. If you are hosting a dinner party, do this before your guests arrive, and when it's time to have dessert, it should be ready to be enjoyed. Stick your knife in and then you are greeted with liquid raspberry sauce. You can now enjoy the chocolate mousse with a fruity sauce, for example. Now for the main thing you have been waiting for. This one has the chocolate inside. Let's cut the middle. You are then greeted with a melt in the middle chocolate lava, but it's cold. Just look at how smooth and soft it is to cut into the mousse. Here is a cross section. 
You can of course do many things with this concept. You could have perhaps a chocolate sponge base or coat the entire thing in chocolate crumbs. It is all up to you. I just wanted to show you that the common hot chocolate fondant can be made cold. Well, there you have it, cold chocolate fondant. Go and make this. I promise you that you will enjoy it. Also, if you find that 70% chocolate is too strong, make it with 50% chocolate. Thank you for watching. As usual, it was a pleasure having you with us on this journey today. If you enjoyed what you watched, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.